So a lot of people will ask, how is OMG similar or different to other standards bodies such as ISO, which is one of the most well-known international ones? And OMG is a peer organization to ISO, so there's a lot of similarities. They have a very common mission, but there are four key differences. Uh, one is what is decided to be a standard based on implementations. Uh, second is how the voting process occurs and who can vote. Uh, the third is timeline, which is, can be really critical in innovative industries. And the fourth is the cost of access to a specific, uh, specific specification. That's a really good point, Jason. Both organizations look for opportunities where there's no standard to fill a gap somewhere in the industry. But there is a major difference, and that is ISO insists on adopting a standard where no implementation exists because they want to make sure to be fair to vendors. We're trying to be fair to the users and create standards where there is an implementation that they can pull off the shelf and use immediately, whether it's commercial or open source. So the voting process is very different between the OMG and ISO. Uh, in ISO, it's one country has one vote, whereas in the OMG, it's one company has one vote. So in ISO, if you want to be a part of the voting process, you need to go lobby your government to be a country rep, to be a, a representative for your country. And in the OMG, you simply come and become a member. Uh, this also means that it's one company, one vote. Um, there are standards bodies where you can pack the room, where it's one individual gets one vote, and larger companies have an advantage. And OMG levels the playing field so that smaller companies have an equal voice with larger companies in the industry, and it really helps fuel innovation and make sure that we produce the best specifications and standards that we can. So another big difference between OMG and ISO is the timeline to create standards and specifications. Uh, for OMG, it's about 12 to 24 months to go from initial concept to a published specification, averaging around 17. And this is really important if you have an industry that's moving quickly and wants to adapt uh, to you know, innovation that's coming into the marketplace. ISO, on the other hand, is around five to seven years. So there's a significant gap there. It gives you a you know, two to three, four year lead sometimes on getting to the market and with a, a workable standard. Uh, also, because OMG is a peer group to the ISO, uh, we will oftentimes have specifications fast-tracked through the ISO pass process. And that can take about two years. So OMG members get access to the specifications two years before they are published by ISO and those are freely available specifications from the OMG. Literally the only difference between the specification published by OMG and the specification published by ISO is the cover sheet. Everything else is exactly the same. Yeah, to expand on that a little bit when it comes to the timeline and the cost, uh, you can get the specifications free from the OMG website publicly. They're available to anyone for free. Or you can wait two to three years and pay ISO for the privilege of downloading exactly the same PDF. Uh, 